of the five qualities that a yogi who is striving to reach the goal possesses. Three have already been discussed. The first is faith and confidence. And this is a a necessary factor. This is a factor the yogi must possess. Uh, it is uh, it is the cause <clears throat> it is the cause for results to come about and second of all health is very important as long as one has the ability to digest what one eats and to get enough sleep then one is considered healthy nowadays there are very few people who are completely healthy. If one had to be completely healthy in order to practice, no one would practice. So this factor is somewhat variable. The third factor is honesty. And this factor is not variable. It's also a must, like faith and confidence. Honesty means not pretending to have qualities one doesn't possess in order to impress others, not hiding the faults that one does have. So if one reveals the faults one has, then others can help you fix them. So if one pretends to be what they aren't, and if one hides what is really there, the faults that are really there, then that person is not honest. That person is deceitful. It said the crooked never have enough. Those who are deceitful, uh, it's apparent to others when someone is deceitful. And so others will avoid that person, the deceitful person. And therefore, it's hard for someone who's deceitful to get enough to eat. The crooked never have enough. The honest always do. When someone is honest and upright, that person is sought out by others, relied upon by others, and thus they have what they need in life. So all these qualities, these three qualities, have been discussed. And now it's the time to discuss the fourth quality, which is aradavirya. Aradhaviryo viharati akusalanang tamanang pahaya kusalanang tamanang upasampadaya tamava tanla parakamo aniketa duro kusadesu tamesu. This is what is discussed in the text. One needs to possess successive powers of courageous effort. One needs to possess effort in all four postures, not just sitting, bending, stretching, leaning, turning the head, blinking the eyes, opening and closing the eyes, standing, walking, lying down. Whatever posture one is in, one must always have courageous effort not to accept the unwholesome dhammas, to reject them, to not give them a chance to arise. So, and also one has to have continuous courageous effort in order to do what is good, to develop kusala. When we say preventing, uh, rejecting a kusala dhammas, one can't Uh, One can't do this after they've already arisen. One has to prepare. One has to prevent them from arising. And one also has to develop wholesomeness. One needs to possess firm determination, firm effort that goes up in stages, continuous progressive effort, dana parakama. And this duty 
The responsibility that one has to practice is one of one's greatest responsibilities, and one has to have the determination to carry this out. Today, Sieroji will discuss this fourth quality of possessing courageous art and effort in terms of both theory and practice. In the past days, Sieroji has spoken about three elements of virya, three kinds of wholehearted effort in the practice. The first is arambha datu, the initial effort or launching effort that we make to start the practice. And second of all, nekama, nekama datu. This is persistent effort. Once one has started practicing, for one reason or other, sometimes because of sitting long hours, uh, sitting a long time, or because this is a tendency one naturally has, uncomfortable feelings arise. So when one starts to encounter uncomfortable feelings in the body, and one's effort is not yet strong enough, one practice is not yet strong enough, one hasn't started yet to see the benefits of the practice, then one feels a lot of consideration for one's body and one pampers oneself. So in that situation, uh, for example, uh, sitting during the Dhamma talk and uh, looking here and there, uh, supporting oneself on one, uh, holding one's knees up and uh, looking around without any sort of consideration for where one is among the, among the group of people that are practicing seriously. This is uh, not, this is shameful behavior. And one does this sort of thing uh, during the meditation because one gives in to painful feelings. So one needs to have determination in order to sit for an hour without moving. And so we have to have determination. And when pain arises, we try to note it. We try to note it courageously. But sometimes we can't win. It, we keep on noting it, but it's still strong. So at that time, we have to change our tactic. And we have to give up noting on the pain for a while, give up observing it, and go back to the rising and falling and build our energy, build our concentration by watching the rising and the falling. And when the pain calls us back again, we can face it again with more energy more concentration, and then we keep on trying. We try to observe it as much as we can, and gradually, by, uh, by working with it as much as we can, observing it to the extent we can, when we can't observe it anymore, going back to the rising and the falling, building up our energy more, we eventually come to the point where we can overcome the pain. So one has to increase one's effort, one's furia, when one encounters difficult feelings like pain. And one, when one can gain the upper hand over pain, then one becomes courageous. One applies effort in every single action, whether bending, stretching, reaching, leaning, and so on. So this type of effort that is a uh, applied that advances courageously moment after moment that is developed is called aradavirya. This effort is always going forward. It doesn't give up. And it's also called parakama datu. This is uh, it's effort that goes up stage by stage, never letting up. One who possesses this type of effort is called in Pali Aradha Virya. 
what is involved in having parekama virya, this effort that goes up stage by stage continuously, is first of all to have a good start. So when the beginning is good, then what follows is sure to be good. So that good start is to learn the method. And learning the method of practice, we understand what its benefits are. Understanding the benefits, we need to have faith in in being able to get these benefits and the desire to gain them. Without uh, faith in the benefits and desire to gain them, we won't make effort. So our initial effort must be good, and then what follows will be sh- will, is sure to be good. So when one backs off from the practice, uh, shifts and moves around and so on, this means one's effort is becoming withdrawn. So the Buddha used the word in the Satipatthana Sutta, atapi. That means one needs to possess ardent effort. This effort can't be sluggish. It can't be cool. Uh, That is not what, that will not lead to success. If one just wants to take it easy, then it's better not to come here. Here we need to follow the schedule. We need to sit during the sittings, walk during the walkings. And if one follows the instructions, then it's just a matter of days before one sees results. If one doesn't follow the instructions, the teachers try at first to do what they can, but when the student continues not to follow the instructions, the teachers don't want to do any more. And such a student who continues not to follow the instructions is called dubasa, dubacha, which means difficult to teach. So if one becomes like this, then one is not making one's trip here worthwhile. We have a responsibility to practice, and this requires overcoming laziness. To overcome laziness, we need nikama datu. This is persistent effort in the face of difficulties. One can't let one's effort become cool. It has to be ardent, hot. We need to have not just one instance of effort. We need to have effort time and again, many, many instances of effort every second of the time. So second after second, eventually we have an hour of effort, hour after hour. In uh, in many hours, we have many moments of, of making effort. So only if one overcomes sluggishness and laziness will one possess virya, will one become atapi, the long I at the end of atapi means that one possesses not just a normal amount of effort, but a lot, a lot of effort. So one has to make effort to overcome the difficulties. And if one doesn't, it's said, anatapi no, entosin kepo, enteraya karo hoti. So when one doesn't possess art and effort, the mind shrinks inside oneself. One has no determination. This antosinkepo is the becoming shrunken inside, contracted. One doesn't want to move. So this type of laziness is a danger to us, enteraya karo. If one, uh, if one gives in to laziness and lets one, one's mind back off and become shrunken, then one will never uh, gain the benefits of the practice. 
So one has to have high-level effort, courageous effort. The effort called atapa is praiseworthy. And if this praiseworthy effort is not there, then kilesas will come in, just like coming in through an open door, starting with laziness. The unwholesome qualities of mind will come in. Whenever there is something enticing that one encounters, that inspires lust, then there will be wanting, craving, lusting, and other types of greed, loba. When one encounters something uh, not to our satisfaction, there will be dissatisfaction, anger, resentment, and various forms of anger or dosa. And all the time there will be wavering, lack of clarity, confusion, that is moha. Whenever effort is not present, these qualities can come in. So to the extent that virya is weak or absent, then kilesas will come in. And one needs to apply effort, not just when standing, sitting, walking, lying down. These are the four main postures. One has to always be aware in whatever posture we're in. But not only these four main postures, one has to be aware of the many small movements that we make, like bending, stretching, lifting the head, leaning, turning, opening and closing the eyes, blinking. So every time there is an act of body, there needs to be effort to observe the object with mindfulness, to develop sati. And if the yogis make make effort, then the kilesas, starting with laziness, are kept out of the mind. They're not, uh, the mind does not accept the kilesas. That this is the quality of virya. Virya has the power to dry up the kilesas. So then the mind doesn't become damp and soggy with the kilesas. So the effort that we make is, first of all, akusalanang tamanang pahanaya. This is the effort needed not to accept the kilesas, to not let them into the mind, to keep them out. And kusalanang tamanang upasampadaya. When one applies effort to observe the arising object, following on that effort is sati. Following on that is samadhi. Following that is panya. So all sorts of kusala, dhammas, all sorts of wholesome dhammas follow upon the effort that we make. Every second that one applies effort to observe the arising object, there is virya. And second after second, when one does this, our effort becomes arada virya, effort that keeps on going. In the mind, this effort keeps on uh, going. Just like when when you run a car and the car battery gets charged because of the car's running, because of the car continuously running, that all that time that the charge is, uh, the battery is being charged. And our mind, too, is like this. Our mind is being energized by every moment of effort that we make. So if one looks here and there during practice, if one shifts, changes posture, at all these times when one is becoming distracted, one's battery is not being charged. And if this happens a lot, the charge that is there will die down and the battery will die. So in that, at that time, we won't be able to start our car. So we need to always be charging our battery, and this is the na- a nature that the yogis need to understand. 
in the world. Heat and cold are each beneficial in their own place. And they have to be used. They each have their own applications, their own places where they are needed. And if one thinks about the car, okay, there needs to be both heat and cold in in the operation of a car. So when we start the car, uh, we can we need enough heat. We need to have uh, the electricity. We need to have. Uh, we, if we start the car, we turn on the lights. Uh, we can turn on the heat, and the oil in the engine needs to be the right temperature. It needs to be hot enough, but not too hot. And so if you think about the engine, the engine has to be warm, should be warm, but not hot, not too hot. So water, the the coolness, coolness as well as heat are needed in the operation of a car. And when the battery... Um, when we operate the car, the battery is being charged. So it, the energy of the battery is what enables us to start the car when we need to. So heat, especially heat, but both heat and cold are important for a car. For yogis, heat is very important. So the heat that we need is the effort to observe the object whenever it arises. So when we go somewhere, if we're observing lifting, moving, placing, for example, every time there's lifting, we need to apply effort. Every moving, we apply effort. Every placing, we apply effort. Time and again, during the walking. And doing this, applying effort to observe the object each time our battery is being charged. When we stop and stand, then we need to make effort to observe the whole body standing. We put our mind on the whole body and keep our effort going. Then turning, we we observe the whole body turning, 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 and so on. In the walking, we need to observe these main parts. In sitting, Starting with the rising and falling, we need to apply effort to observe whatever arises without missing. We need to make this type of effort. When we lie down too, we put the mind on the whole body, observe the movements that take place as the body gradually lies down. And whenever we need to do things like bending, stretching, blinking, Drinking, eating, reaching, bringing, all these things, all these bodily actions need to be observed each time they happen. And doing this keeps our battery charged. We can't be sluggish. This ardent effort means we need to be, we need to have heat. And this type of effort is praiseworthy. We're not trying to do something that is unbeneficial. We're trying to do something that is worthwhile. So every moment that we can apply effort is very valuable. Those who value effort and keep on trying to apply themselves every single moment gain momentum in the practice. And they develop parekama datu. This is the effort that goes up stage by stage, successive effort. This is also called arada virya. So one who applies effort diligently comes to possess this type of effort. Runners, when they start out from the starting point, they don't have much momentum. But stride by stride, with each step that they take, they gain momentum. And then their momentum becomes very, very strong. And they seem to just be going by themselves. 
When you start a car, at first it doesn't have much speed. So, but it gains momentum as we keep on going. So, what's necessary is first of all to start. And second, don't stop. Just keep on going. And when one does this, one will gain momentum. To the extent that the road ahead of one is straight, one will just be able to keep on going without a lot of concern for the road. And for yogis, the practice becomes like this too. One has to start out and then not stop, keep on going. And when one does this, one builds up momentum. And one gets to the point where one can just coast. So when Parakama Datu arises, this effort that goes up stage by stage, keep on going. If you keep on going, your effort will become almost, you, you will get to the point where you don't need to make any special effort. Even uh, one's one's noting will be uh, so good that even small kilesas don't have a chance to arise. The mind and the body become exceptionally clean at that time. And at that time, too, our aim will be very, very accurate. Yogis always need to have effort to make the mind stick to the object with mindfulness. And they always need to have aiming so that the effort is accurate. These two factors always need to be applied. So one just has to uh, keep on applying these two effort, uh, these two factors of effort to observe the object and aiming. If one thinks about it, why is it, what is it, How is it? This type of thinking is interrupting one's effort. And thus, Sierroji said, this practice is not for thinkers. It's not for thinkers. One has to just behave like a soldier who is under orders to go forward, advance. So one has to simply uh, have that mentality and not think about anything. Sayaraji asked the yogis to reflect for yourselves about your practice. Every time the object arises, is there art and effort or not? So is there art and effort to observe the object that arises and is aiming present? Without these two factors, sati will not arise. Samadhi will not arise, and Panya will not arise. So Sierraji will continue this tomorrow night because the time is up today. That's all for today. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.